Good afternoon, church. Today is, first of all, I want to say thanks to the pastor and the elders and the leaders of this church for inviting me to speak. Today is Pathfinder Day, so I didn't expect to see so many um, children and young people in the church. Don't you have a Pathfinder Club? <laughs> I'm not hearing any answer. Yes. Oh, I think I'm hearing yes, and you know, people are smiling. Now, you see, I have on my Pathfinder uniform. I have been a Pathfinder almost all my life. I've been, you know, I grew up as a Pathfinder. I was a counselor. I was a director. I, have, I stepped down as a director, but I'm still a Pathfinder. And that's why I have on my Pathfinder uniform. Because when I'm finished here, I'm going to join them on the park. And I just want to encourage all our boys and girls who I'm seeing here and the young people, get involved in the Pathfinder Club. I'll tell you why. It helps you to stay in the church. It helps you to stay with God. And, you know, and I'm serious because there were eight of us in my, you know, we were eight. Four brothers, four sisters. We all grew up in the Pathfinder Club. When my brothers got older, they decided that my father was too strict, so let's leave the church. But they're all back in every one. All of the, um, my brothers and sisters are walking with the Lord. One of them has died, he died in the Lord. So I'm just saying to parents, encourage your children to be part of the Pathfinder Club. It helps them to understand God's word. It also helps them to be community minded. There are so many things that it helps them with. This morning, I'm happy to be here. My daughter Faith is with me. I know she didn't want, you know, she doesn't like to draw attention to herself, but, um, uh, you know, she's my daughter. <laughs> so I like you to know that she's here and I have my friend Carol here with me. It was nice to see Elder Idioti. You know, some of the people from prayer breakfast. By the way, look how many of you are here today and I don't see you on prayer breakfast. And I am not, I'm from Stanborough Park Church and I'm on prayer breakfast every, almost every day except on Sabbath when, they, when there's no prayer breakfast. So I hope the next time I look at prayer breakfast, I can see about 100 people because that's what I'm seeing here today. And, you know, and be blessed. I am telling you, it's quite a blessing. I'm seeing um, Sister Vivian down there and I'm seeing Brother Frank and Sister Iris. I don't know who else is here for prayer breakfast, but I can see some other people. Um, Shanika, thank you for, I can't believe it, but you know, um, I always, you know, I always say to single parents, right? So, something, because I was a single parent and I know how difficult it is, I always say to them, you know, um, don't take this any, but it means puppies will turn dogs, in other words, that your children will grow up. This morning when I saw Shanika, I couldn't remember who she was until when I looked at her because the last time I saw her, she was little. So God bless you and nice to see, oh, that's from upstairs. Oh my, <laughs> um, nice to see the Davises and you know, and anybody else who knows me and I don't know you, but, um, but God be with you. I did enjoy the lesson study. You didn't need to hear the sermon because the lesson study somehow, without my looking at it, it's linked to the sermon. So I trust that we all be blessed this morning as we listen to God's word. When you're up against a struggle that shatters all your dreams, when your hopes been cruelly crushed by Satan's manifested schemes, and you feel the urge within you to submit to earthly fears, don't let the faith you're standing on seem to disappear. Praise the Lord. He can work through those who praise him. Praise the Lord. For God inhabits praise. Praise the Lord. For the chains that seem to bind you, belts are behind you when you praise him. Now Satan is a liar, and he wants to make us think 
We are paupers when he knows himself. We're children of the king. So lift up the mighty shield of faith, for the battle must be won. We know that Jesus Christ is risen, so the work's already done. Praise the Lord. He can work through those who praise him. Praise the Lord. For God inhabits praise. Praise the Lord. For the chains that seem to bind you serves only to remind you they'll drop powerless behind you when you praise him. Praise the Lord. He can work through those who praise him. Praise the Lord. For God inhabits praise. Praise the Lord. For the chains that seem to bind you serves only to remind you they'll drop powerless behind you when you praise him. Praise him. Praise him when you praise him. When you praise him. When you praise the Lord. Amen. Let's bow our hands. Lord, today we want to praise you. Father, my sermon is entitled, God Sat Nav. And this morning we were studying about tying to self and allowing you to lead in our lives. And as we listen to your words, which you have given me to speak to your people, I ask you to anoint my lips, dear Lord. Amen. Fill me with the Holy Spirit, so that every word I say this morning this afternoon will be words that, are t that you have instructed me to say. And may we all be encouraged, including myself, so that as we take that road, that this, as we go on that destination to heaven, that we'll know that your satnav is leading us to the right destination, to heaven. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. and amen. Many years ago, my daughter Faith and I left Watford around 1.45 p.m. for a South England Conference Camp meeting in Wales. We input necessary information into our satnav and should have arrived just before 5 p.m. Everything went well until we saw the sign for a press statin. The satnav indicated we only had seven more miles and 15 minutes. However, Faith decided that she knew where she was going. She was not going to follow the satnav's instructions, but take what she thought was a better route. We spent more than 45 minutes on this detour, turning around a few times. When I realized we were indeed on our way to Prestatin, I quietly pointed out to my daughter, to my lovely daughter, that after 45 minutes, we were 11 miles away from our destination. <laughs> Faith shrugged her shoulders and said she did not feel like going through those narrow, um, hill, um, narrow roads and hills. She wanted to stay on the main road. I pondered on her answer and I thought, and by the way, I have, I have a son in the audience, you know. His name is Dwight Allen. That's my son's name. So when I, when I heard his name this morning, I said, well, from today you're my son. <laughs> because that's my son, my son. I have a son in New York. I, my daughter is here, but my son lives in New York with his wife and children. Had she listened to the satnav, we would not have wasted so much time and traveled a longer distance. She thought she knew the way, having traveled that journey before, but she forgot which path to take to get onto the main road. 
She did not feel like going through the narrow roads and hills because for her, there was a better way. And that's how we behave. For, for those of us who were driving before the invention of the satnav, we do appreciate this modern invention. I remember some years ago having to do the ministry in music at Luton North Church and could not locate the venue. I was going around and around in circles. It was nearing 11 a.m. and I was still searching. But God is great. Amen. I said, Lord, please, I need to find a church, Lord, I have to sing. And do you know, within a few minutes, I was there. For me, a satnav is a blessing. What is a satnav? I know most people know what a satnav is, but I'm a teacher, so I, you know, I, I like to make certain that everybody, even the children, understand what I'm talking about. A satellite navigation or satnav system is a system that uses satellites to provide information of a location. It allows satellite navigation devices to determine longitude and latitude, and those, you know, those who are doing geography would understand that, but most people know that's geography. Longitude, latitude, and altitude elevation or elevation to high precision using time signals transmitted along, along a line of sight by radio from satellites. The system can be used for providing position, navigation, or for tracking the position of something fitted with a receiver, and it's called satellite tracking. The signals also allow the electronic receiver to calculate the current local time to high precision, which allows the synchronization. These uses are collectively known as positioning, navigation, and, train, and timing. So the three important things I want you to remember about the sat-nav, and you know, they, you know it has a lot of features, because I have one in my car, so I know. But the three important things I want you to remember is positioning, navigation, and timing. God's sat-nav has those and more. I want you to turn with me to Isaiah 30, verse 21. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, when you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Life is a journey. And for those of us who've accepted the Lord, our destination is heaven. But we can either choose to follow the directions of God's satnav and enjoy eternal life or Disregard those instructions and journey into hell. There are many stories in the Bible which remind us we should follow God's satnav because that satnav will never lead us away from our destination. And we know that some um, satnavs have done so. We remember one time, I can't remember where we were going, but the satnav led us to a pool of water. It's okay, you know, we had to, and the thing is to get out of there, we had to reverse. That was something else. But, the, but God said, now will never lead you straight. will lead you straight to heaven. On the contrary, though rugged, steep, or narrow the path, God will carry us, God will always carry us on eagles' wings. Therefore, I submit that God said, now is the directions we receive through his word, through the prophets or his leaders or spiritual people who are guided by the Holy Spirit. And listen, even the children, God can lead through the Holy Spirit to lead us to heaven. Chapters 17 to 20 in Second Chronicles are dedica dedicated to King Jehoshaphat because he was a righteous king. Jehoshaphat means the Lord judges. I would admonish us to spend some time reading through those chapters because they have a lot of instructions, a lot of thought for us. But, and they clearly illustrate how important it is to follow God's satnam. In my message today, I have used excerpts from some of the chapters because 
I can't read through those chapters with your, else you'll be here until um, this evening and then you won't want me to come back at all. And I do want to come back because I, I, you know, I love you and I know God will give me messages for you. I've used excerpts from three of them to highlight the need for all of us to spend most of our lives allowing God to direct every aspect of our lives. I'd like you to turn with me to 2 Chronicles 17, verses 3 to 6. 2 Chronicles 17, verses 3 to 6. And you can use whatever your device is. I like to see my, the young people, I'm a teacher, as I said. I know some of you know me. I'm trying to remember. I know some children, oh, I, and I must talk about Stanbrough School. You know, I used to teach at Stanbrough Secondary School. And uh, one thing I can say, everywhere I go and I'm preaching, I always promote Stanbrough School because I keep telling parents, their children, it's, it's God's school, their children are safer in Stanbrough School because we promote God. I know Stanbrough School had some problems recently because we, and when I say we, as a church, we weren't following God's thought now because when we don't do things right, the Lord allows things to happen. Check the Bible. I'm only speaking about the Bible, from what I know in the Bible. When the leaders of the children of Israel did what was wrong in God's eyes, the people suffered. So, um, you know, I just want to say today that Samuel School is back on track. It's where God wants it to go. And so if you have your children, think about it. You know, some of you will say you don't have money, but let me tell you something. I, I say this to people all the time. I am not rich um, in material things. And the reason why I'm not rich in material things is because for me, my children are more important. For me, getting to heaven is more important. And I help, you know, my friends say, I have, I have a money tree because I help the whole world. If you come to me, even if I have 10 pounds and you need, you're in need of it, I'll give it to you. You know why? The money tree is in heaven. And when I give, the Lord shakes the branches. And when he shakes that tree, the leaves come down as palms. Your children, your children's salvation is very important to God. Amen. If you want your children, don't think about them. We, you know, if they go to Samuel School, they can't turn doctor. They can't. Oh, we have so many of our children. Let me tell you. Every time I go on Facebook, I see the children who attended Sandro School. They're engineers, they're doctors, they're everything. And they would say to me, Miss, Miss, we don't ever forget your little song that you taught us when you were teaching us bearings. You know, every time I, I smile, I can't, and th these are adults, you know, they say, Miss, first north you must go, then clockwise you turn, bearings are written in trees. Why? because they remember that we prayed for them. Our teachers pray for our children. You have children here who go to Stanbell School and they will tell you that. You know, we haven't reached where we're supposed to be, where we're supposed to reach with our school, but we are getting there slowly. So pray for us because our schools are to represent God in everything that we do. Anyway, back to Second Chronicles 17, verses three to six. And I read in your hearing, by the way, all my texts are taken from the New King James Version. I have no problem with King James Version, um, but you know, the, the English in, in the New King James Version is a little better, so I use it. Now the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the former ways of his father David. He did not seek the Baals, but sought the God of his father and walked in his commandments and not according to the acts of Israel. Therefore, the Lord established the kingdom in his hand, and all Judah gave presents to Jehoshaphat, and he had riches and honor in abundance, and his heart took delight in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he removed the high places and wooden images from Judah. I want you to, let's go to verses 12 and 13. So Jehoshaphat, became increasingly powerful, and he built fortresses and storage cities in Judah. He had much property in the cities of Judah, and the men of war, mighty men of valor, were in Jerusalem. Chapter 15 of Prophets and Kings, entitled Jehoshaphat, 
In that chapter, Mrs. E.G. White commented on Jehoshaphat. And this is what she says, and this is, this is also for us. To this wise provision for the spiritual needs of his subjects, Jehoshaphat owed much of his prosperity as a ruler. In obedience to God's law, there is great gain. In conformity to the divine requirements, there is a transforming power that brings peace and goodwill among men. If the teachings of God's word were made the controlling influence in the life of every man and woman, boys and girls, if mind and heart were brought under its restraining power, the evils that now exist in national and in social life would find no place. From every home would go forth an influence that would make men and women strong in spiritual insight and in moral power. And thus nations and individuals would be placed on vantage ground. What admonition for us, and by the way, I see one of, one of my pastors in the congregation, Pastor Davies. I, I'm happy to see him and his lovely wife and, and his, his children. And, I know one of his daughters who go to Stanville Secondary School, I, you know, so, you know, I, I, he knows what I'm talking about. So, you know, um, anyway, what Mrs. White was saying there, that in our homes, if we teach our children to follow, and we need to instruct them, by the way, my, you know, one of the reasons why my daughters felt they could do their own thing is because my father used to wake us up at 5 a.m. in the morning to do worship. And, um, you know, I did the same thing with my two children. I woke them, at, woke them up at 5 a.m. in the morning to study God's Word. The reason why I know the Bible so well is because of the time my parents spent with me at 5 a.m. in the morning, ensuring that I understand God's Word. And by the way, I was reading the Bible since I was two. So you couldn't imagine how long ago I've been reading the Bible because if you see my gray hairs and I'll tell you another story later on. So you can imagine. So and be and I'm I must say this, being on the prayer breakfast has helped me to understand the Bible more and more. Because you know what? They ask me to do presentations and for some reason I always I most of the time I get the most difficult chapter in the Bible to explain. But but that is God's way of ensuring that when I go to preach, I understand his word. Amen. Because many years ago, I went to New Bowl College. I wanted, you know, I was preaching and everybody, you know, I, my, I'm a lay preacher, so as I went from church to church preaching, they said, Sister Florence, you need to go to New Bowl College because you need to become a pastor. And so I went. Because at that time, I was teaching part-time at, at Stanbrough School. And one day the head teacher came to me and said, Florence, we need you to teach full-time maths. Of course, I asked the Lord what to do. I had gone for about six weeks at New Bowl. And if you go, you'll see my picture up on the wall. And, you know, that's, that's how come I know so many pastors. Because God, you know, God sometimes takes us through a winding path. Because he knows what he wants for us. I had gone there to do a doctorate in theology. And New Bowl College was setting up everything for me to do a doctorate in theology because at that time they were not offering doctorate. Um, you know, what I wanted to do, they weren't offering it. And so, you know, when the head teacher said that to me, of course I went to the Lord. And I said, okay, Lord, what do I do? I really want to understand the Bible more. And the Lord said to me, go and teach mathematics. You don't need a doctorate to understand how to, t um, to preach. Because every time you sit to write a sermon, it will be what I tell you to write. I will give you the topic, and you speak my words. And I'm telling you, God is amazing. God, I have preached so many sermons. I know I have to put them, as people say, put them in books, put them in volumes. And I'm saying to you this morning, my brothers and sisters, young people, children, if you want God to lead in your life, listen to him because he speaks to us. And that's what I mean about God's sat now.
I can hear the children saying amen, that's nice. <laughs> King Jehoshaphat was very wise as he obeyed God's laws and followed his instructions. But he made a detour and God had to intervene to save his life. So let's see what happened with King Jehoshaphat, this wise king. Turn with me to 2 Chronicles 18 and we will begin with verses 1 to 7. Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance. And by marriage, he allied himself with Ahab. After some years, he went down to visit Ahab in Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen in abundance for him and the people who were with him and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. So Ahab, king of Israel, said to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Will you go with me against Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as you are and my people as your people, we will be with you in the war. Also, Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, please inquire for the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, 400 men, and said to them, shall we go to war against Ramad Gilead, or shall I refrain? So they said, go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not still a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? So the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him because he never prophesies good concerning me, but always evil. He is Micaiah, the son of Imla. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say such things. Now, we can't understand why this wise king, Jehoshaphat, would allow this evil king because Ahab was very evil. And the first mistake that Jehoshaphat made was to ally himself with him through his son. You know, his son was um, married to Jezebel's daughter. Imagine you taking your, you know, your child and, and oh, um, anyway, I, I want, you know. <laughs> but notice, even though um, he... You, and look what um, he have did. And be careful, people. Don't let feed, people feed you too much because every time they give you many things, they want something from you. That, it's not true all the time, but most of the time that is what happens. So he, look how he, he fed them big fees. And then he said, can you join me in war against Ramad Gilead? And then he said, um, Jehoshaphat said, well, you need to inquire of the prophets because the prophets were supposed to get their information from God. But what, um, so there were 400 prophets who said to, um, to, yes, go, everything will be all right. But Jehoshaphat was still wise. That's why I still don't understand why he made the mistake he made. He said, is there not still a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? The king said, yes, there is, but he speaks evil against me all the time. So I don't want <laughs> Micaiah to say anything. Now, let's look at what happens in verse 8. So let's read from verse 8. Then the king of Israel called one of his officers and said, bring Micaiah, the son of Imla, quickly. Now, I understand from my research that Micaiah was in prison. But for, for some, something, but I, I didn't have the time to find out why he was there. But anyway, he came, the prophet came. Let's go to verse 12. Then the messenger who had gone to call Micaiah spoke to him, saying, Now listen, the words of the prophets with one accord encouraged the king. Therefore, please let your word be like the word of one of them and speak encouragement. And Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, Whatever my God says, that I will speak. Then he came to the king, and the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramad Gilead, or shall I refrain? And Micaiah said, go and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. He was mocking, of course. Verse 15, so the king said to him, how many times shall I make you swear that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, 
These have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you? He would not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. In other words, Micaiah was telling him he was going to die, but he wasn't listening. In verses 18 to 24, which we will not read, I'll just summarize it for you. Micaiah shared the vision he had from God, but the false prophets mocked him. And one of them, Zedekiah, struck him on the cheek and asked him, which way did the spirit from the Lord go from me to you? Have you ever given someone a message from the Lord and the person respond by saying, why did not the Lord speak to me as he speaks to you? You know, who are you? In other words, why, why is God giving you messages? Maybe you, you know, but God gives me messages to people. And, you know, um, many times me and God have what we call, what I call my Moses moments. So I would say, Lord, please, Lord, not me, Lord, because, you know, but the Lord, you know, the Lord has his own way of making me do what he wants, to, wants me to do. And then I go and give them the message, and they said, so it is, not all, all the time. People who know me well, if I say that the Lord is telling me to say this to you, they listen. But some people say, why didn't he? You know, they just want to do whatever they want to do. So they said, why didn't the Lord tell me, um, tell me directly? It's the same thing was happening here. In other words, um, Zedekiah, who was an evil prophet, he said, so how come the Lord didn't tell me to, tell you, to say that? And he, imagine hitting the man on his cheek. He reacted in violence. That's when you're speaking the truth. Some people get very angry with you. And, you know, I've been around long in the church. I grew up in the church. I, I never, never, you know, I thank God that I, I'm not saying I was always perfect, but I never left the church. I've always been here. And I've been a leader in this church for years. I was on the church board when I was 14 years old. So you can imagine how long I've been a leader. And, you know, and many things I've had to deal with. And many times I got into trouble because I used to speak too much. But I've learned James 3. And I like all of us to read James 3. You cannot read James 3 and study it carefully and don't change. You know, I, I like to defend people, you know, and I thought, well, I can defend people, but the Lord has taught me that you don't have to defend them. I will look after them. Um, you know, I've learned to speak less, hear, hear a lot, speak less, and allow the Lord to lead me. And listen, I, what I want to say to you is that when you are asking God to change things in your lives, he has to take you through that path, that satna has to take you through that path over and over again until you do what God wants you to do. If you're asking God for patience, you bet you'll get so many things in your life. You'll say, Lord, I need patience, Lord. He's giving you patience by giving you, you know, you have to stand up in the light and wait forever. God is giving you patience. You have to queue up. Oh, and, and listen, I, I just had, and I can see your people in Britain know the queue. I'll tell you about that later on. No, I really admired it. And to see people walking in lines, in straight lines, one behind the other without any things to guard them, that was amazing to me. God, but you know what? Um, God, whatever you're asking God to help you to overcome, he will put things in your path to overcome it, whatever it is. If you don't love and if you like to, you know, some of us, you know, we use our mouths terribly. And, um, you know, I've learned when people said things to me that were negative, I used to be very quiet because I used to be bullied at school. And so um, there was a time I became very assertive and that's how I said, you know, I, you know if you tell me A, I'll reach all the way to Z because I, I knew how to use my mouth. But then the Lord has taught me, then I became very quiet. And when people say negative things, I won't say anything. But when I studied James 3, I recognized that, you know, when James talk about um, the rudder, you know, the, that's a little thing in a ship. And if it's, you, it's not used, the ship won't go anywhere. What God was saying to me is that, Florence, when people say negative things to you, you need to be quiet, allow them to say what they want to say, and then you say to them how you feel about what they have said. And I'm telling you, that worked far better because I have had friends who, you know, they like to say, you do this and you do that. And when I listened to them, I said, you shouldn't say that, you know, because it doesn't sound nice. 
or don't, I, I'm different from you, you know, those sort of things. Learn to do that, but allow the Holy Spirit to work through you. When people are saying bad things about you, don't react in the same way. Allow, the, you know, let the Lord lead you, because it helps them. It helps them, I know what I'm saying. Micaiah revealed, and by the way, this Micaiah is not the Micah that, that you know, in the Bible, the, the other prophet, he was also, Micaiah was also a prophet, but this one, um, it's not that Micah, because some people, you know, because um, some researchers have shown that Micah's name, Micah's name was also Micaiah, and it was reduced to Micah, but this is another Micah. My, uh, Micaiah revealed to the two kings everything that the Lord said to him, warning them that they would lose the battle and Ahab would die. Through his prophet, God was warning Jehoshaphat, but, but Jehoshaphat paid no attention. King Ahab ordered Micaiah to be in prison, saying he would release him when he returns safely from the battle. <laughs> well, Micaiah answered him and said, you, you won't return, but still he was not listening. Let's go to verse 29 of, of um, 2 Chronicles 18. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will dis disguise myself and go into battle, but you put on your robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and they went into battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots who were with him, saying, Fight with no one small or great, but only with the king of Israel. So it was when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat that they said, it is the king of Israel. <laughs> Remember, the king of Israel had disguised himself. Jehoshaphat had on his kingly robes. Therefore, they surrounded him to attack. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. Even when we are doing wrong, God helps us. Amen. Even when we are not listening to him, he knows because we are free. And God diverted them from him. Let's continue to read in verse 32. For it was, for so it was, when the captains of the chariots saw that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. Now a certain man drew a bow at random and struck the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. So he said to the driver of his chariot, turn around and take me out of the battle, for I am wounded. The battle increased that day, and the king of Israel propped himself up on his chariot, facing the Syrians until evening. And about the time of sunset, he died. Just like Micaiah said would happen. That's why we have to be careful whom we listen to. You know, there are many of us in this church, and when I say this church, I mean my church, because I'm an elder in my church, San Second, um, <laughs> San Second, San Park Church, and I'm talking about the Seventh Adventist Church. There are many of us who think that you know God has given us a special unction to lead. So because God, you know, so we tell the pastors what to do, we tell the elders, we tell everybody, and you know, what you need to do, what I'm saying, and many of us are saying false things because we don't allow God to lead in our lives. I'm saying to you, whatever is your position in God's church, allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you and make certain that whatever you are saying is what God wants you to say. Now, God had to, you know, God sat down, had to recalculate, you know, when they sat down, say recalculation, God had to do that in order to save Jehoshaphat. But I thank God that he's not like me, because, you know, some of us would say God should have left him to die because he was disobedient. No. It's, this is the God we serve, and that's the same way we should be with our children. Be gracious to them. We love, you know, don't, you know, when we use harsh things to our children, I'm not saying that sometimes you don't have to discipline them, but you still have to turn around and help them in whatever way they're going because God is directing you and he's directing their lives. Amen. Now turn with me to Second Chronicles 20, verses 1 to 4. And I'm reading from the New King James Version still. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Mennonites came to make war on Jehoshaphat. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. 
It is already in Azazel, Tamar. Alarm Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. Notice this, you know, because this is what he always do, um, did. And that's what he was saying to Ahab. But this is a different Jehoshaphat. He learned his lesson in Second, um, in second Chronicles 18. So here we are in Second Chronicles 20. Je Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every tongue in Judah to seek him. Let's go to verse 12. After Jehoshaphat had prayed, this is what, this is what he was saying to God in verse 12. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood before the Lord. Now, when you don't know what to do, it's always better. When I don't know what to do, you know, that's the time I'm really asking God, what do I do? And I will remember Elder Joe's testimony this morning because in every situation in your life, you need to ask God to take control. Amen. And there are times in your lives when you don't know what to do. You know, there are times in my life when I didn't know what to do. I told you, you know, I've been a single parent for most of my life. Even when I was married, I was a single parent. And I married a Seventh-day Adventist, an elder in the church. So if you think your life is perfect, you know, and, and anything I'm saying to you this morning, I'm talking from the heart. I'm talking because I know what it is to go through crucibles. I'm still having a crucible, some people know, but I can, you know, they see a smile on my face all the time because I know that my God, whatever crucible is leading me through, is to help somebody else. Amen. It's a help to, you know, I'm also God's satnav, you know, helping, and we are all, we can all be God's satnav, helping people to the kingdom of heaven. Know the steps Jehoshaphat took. Verse, in verse three, he set himself to seek the Lord. How does one seek the Lord? One has to prepare one's heart. Mm -hmm. He proclaimed the fast throughout Judah. The leader proclaimed the fast. I remember um, when, when um, the pandemic started, coronavirus started, I did ask one of our leaders, could we have a, can we call together the churches so we can pray? That, this is when, before things got really bad because our school was one of the first um, places to close down because of, some of the children had coronavirus and some of the teachers. And, but this was before, even before that happened, I said to that person, can we call people together to pray? And the person, the person laughed. I'll never forget it. Um, because I, I did say to, the, um, to that leader that the, the government will call people to pray. And if we can do it as a church, it will save some of our people. Maybe if the leader had listened to me, so many of our people would not have died. But the leader, as I said, the leader laughed. But here, Jehoshaphat proclaimed a fast. Gathered, he gathered the people, then input the information into God's sat now. That's in verses 6 to 12, which I did not read because, you know, it's, it's a sermon and I can't put everything in my sermon. But I like the words from verse 12. We have no might. We do not know what to do. That is when we listen to God sat now, when we do not know what to do. And then he and all Judah waited on God for directions in verse 13. Now, how did God respond? First, he used someone in the congregation. This in, you can follow me in verse 14 in your Bibles. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jehiel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite and descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly. God sometimes used people in the congregation, in the congregation, but we do not listen to them because they're not a Sabbath school superintendent, they're not a pathfinder director, they're not an elder, so God can't use them. We know everything. We do not know whom God uses to help us to take to, um, to get to heaven. Always remember that he can even use a little child. And you know, I remember, um, you know, one day, many years ago, I was doing something and my daughter said, Mommy, why are you doing that? You told us not to do so and so. 
God can use even children to bring you back in line. Secondly, God issued a command, and that's in verse 15. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And that's the, um, you know, the battle is never ours. If you have a, um, a terrible, you know, the, some of us, we talk about neighbors from hell, and you have children who are behaving. Oh, the battle is not yours. Don't try to fight the battle. If somebody, you know, mash your feet, don't try to fight them. The battle is not yours. The Lord knows how to deal with them. I can tell you that from personal experience. Uh, unfortunately, I've seen some people die because my father, you know, I had a father who used to say, I leave them at the foot of the cross. And when he says, I leave somebody at the foot of the cross, I remember when I, when I, I think I was about 17, when I could have said to him, Daddy, you need to stop saying that, you know, because every time you say that, somebody dies. And I'm not exaggerating. So that's why I don't say it. I just say, Lord, bless them. He still deals with them, but they don't, well, some of them have died, but most of the time they don't die. <laughs> so be careful, you know. Uh, you know, it, yeah, it, this is serious business because don't mess with people who can pray. I'm telling you, when my father gets on his knees and he prays for you, oh my, you look out. Something will happen to you. And, you know, and that is why I said I had to wait until I could say, Daddy, come, you shouldn't pray like that. Because in my day, you know, it's not like now when children call their parents by their first name. Ah, you, you're not doing this to me and so forth. No, in my day, you had to be respectful. You did what your parents told you to do. And so I had to wait. I started to teach at 16. So by the time I reached 17, you know, I could have spoken to my dad, you know, because I got a little more um, courage. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to say to you, be not afraid when, you, when things aren't going right in your lives. You know, when you have a problem, just remember to input it into God's sat nav because he pays attention. God pays attention to what you're saying. And you pay it, you know, you need to get into the word. It's the word that helps you to understand God. Because when you're studying the word, you have to pray to understand the word. And you also, you know, you need to have a relationship with God so that you can say anything to him. I say anything to God. And I, you know, and he talks back to me. So I know that God will do for me more than I can think, ask of him. Now, the thing about it is that the Lord told Jehoshaphat what to do. And then he said, you don't have, to, but he also gave them some instructions. And one of the things Jehoshaphat did was to praise the Lord. He said, you know, imagine going into battle, you know, people going to battle with tongues and swords. Well, in those days, but set up, set up send a set of people to just praise the Lord, to just be singing. And I was listening to you singing, we are marching to Zion, and I'm saying, should I stand up and tell them, come on, let's sing some more, we are marching to Zion. Aren't you glad to be alive? How could you sing marching to Zion, you know, we are marching to... No! Abby, next time, tell, get up and tell them, you know, that any time you sing and we march to Zion, make, make them stand up and march to Zion, please. We are up, all of us are happy to be alive. Look how many of our friends have died. You know how much of my family died from coronavirus? Aren't you happy to be here today? When you sing, 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 because God will do for you more than you can ever think as or desire of him. When those people sang the Lord horn, and what did the Lord do? He, you know, he won the battle for them. He created, you know, the army started to fight among themselves. And God didn't have to do anything. They, they just killed themselves. And then the people went and, and collected all the plunder. Because God was fighting the battle for them. Amen. And the fear of the Lord came upon them. And if you read verse, um, verse 30 of Second Chronicles 18, it says, And the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace. That's when you allow the Lord to lead in your life. Even as I shared with you the, you know, the, the things about Jehoshaphat and his taking a detour instead of allowing God, you know, instead of listening to God's instructions, God had to recalculate in order to save his life. And you notice what happened when he listened to God. I want to share a story with you. And this story is recent, it's very recent. And 
I want to say to you that when God tells us to do something, we, ju we have to listen to his voice because sometimes God tells us to do something and there are so many voices that we, you know, we tend to listen to the voices rather than God. Now, the queen has died and as you know, um, people are going to Westminster Hall to view the queen, the, um, view the body. Now, I, I'm a historian. Most children know me as someone who teaches maths. But if you go on Facebook, you'll see those who talk about me teaching history. And I wasn't, I, you know, I wasn't really bothered about going to view the, um, the queen. But then the Lord said to me, you need to go. And, you know, because, you know, you like history and you like to be a part of history. I wanted to go on Sunday, this coming Sunday. In fact, my daughter said she was going to go. So I said, okay, we can go on Sunday. But then she said she wasn't going to go. And the Lord said, you need to go on Thursday. And when you were um, going, I'm telling you what God said to me. He said, put on your Pathfinder uniform. Let me see if I can get this thing on. I was too pressing. It's on. Okay. So I told my friend, I got one of my friends in London. She also wanted to go. And she was happy when I said that. And she, yeah, no, and we decided that we, I remember, you know, when I said to somebody that I was, I'm going to, going to London to view, um, to, to the viewing, and the person said, and I told them I'm wearing my Pathfinder uniform, the person said, so what? It won't make a difference. I went to God and I, you know, because the way the person said it, you know, I was taken aback and the Lord said, do not tell anyone that you're wearing your Pathfinder uniform. Do not tell anyone where you're going. Just go. I have work for you to do. Yeah. And so I went. No. It's good to listen to the news because, you know, the news was saying you had to be in the queue for nine hours, all sorts of hours. But the news said there is a special queue for those, of, those who are disabled. And I know most people don't think I'm disabled because I'm standing here, but I'm very disabled. You may see one of the pictures with me and my stick. But anyway, God, I cannot, I don't have time because I know the time is going and I, I'm, I'm concerned about the children and, you know, those of us who are diabetic like me and all of that. But you need to listen to this, how God leads. So um, we went, I, we left home around five o'clock in the, in the morning, that's from Watford, and I went to my friend's house. We left there around six. We spent more time trying to find where we had to go than in the queue. But even in that, God was leading, because we spoke to so many police officers. We asked them, about, you know, my friend, you have to meet my friend, <laughs> she's very jovial. She asked them, um, can we have some breakfast, you know, things like those. And we, they, some people are giving us wrong directions and, and so forth and so on. But eventually, they told us that we need, needed to get to a place called Tate Britain. You know, when we asked some policemen, they said, you must get to Tate Britain. So we said, how do we get there from here, where we were? They said, you have to take, go up the road and you um, find a taxi, you get a taxi. No, we didn't know how to get a taxi. And so we went to the police officers and we said, can you tell us how to, um, how, how do we get a taxi to go to Tate Britain? By the time the words were out of our mouth, a female um, police officer had flagged down a taxi. That's how God works. He even uses the police officers. And so we went, we just spent half an hour in the queue. And um, if you don't believe, believe me, oh, I'm looking for my, my band. I did bring it with me. Anyway, we had to wear, wear a band and it was, oh yes, it's here. It's on my band. Eight o'clock we arrived there. And, and I have a picture to show what time we left because I did take out. I'm not showing you all the pictures, by the way. I'm just explaining to you how God works. It's not about me. It's about God. Amen. I am saying to you, my brothers, my sisters, young people, children, boys and girls, that I was photographed more than a hundred times. And it is no I can't show you a hundred, you know. And when I say photograph, some of them I managed to get them because I was able to, you know, some people wanted to chat with me, so I said, well, okay, you could take a, can, I, can we take a photograph with you? 
I explained to them, they thought I was, because I had master guide, they thought I was a guide. So I had to explain to them about Pathfinder Rain, and I explained to them about the Seventh-day Adventist Church that we worship on Sabbath. I was, I was interviewed on BBC. The only thing, you know, the, that interview was on the radio, so you would not have seen it, but it was, it's there. And, and people tell me, they even saw me on um, Sky News because I, while I was waiting for the guy to interview me, I was there. But the point is, it's not about me, it's about God. Uh, you see these two ladies, well, I'm showing you some of the pictures. As I said, I can't show you all of them. Be um, but I'm just showing you the ones that are important. I can't even remember where some of them came from. But okay, let me see if I'm doing this right now. Uh, okay. I want to go forward. Oh. I, okay, now you see folks from California, okay, I, 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 can the people, yes, help me because um, <laughs> I'm not very good with, with technology and I'm not ashamed to say it. Now those are the Queen Special Guards, I just want to suppose, you notice all the pomp and circumstance concerning the Queen's death. Now if you read in the Bible, you see the same thing, when the kings die and so forth and so on. But I'm just looking at that, you know, I want you to think. Next, the next slide, please. Um, the, that's one of the floral arrangements. And if you look carefully, you'll see my, I, I did a card for the king, King Charles III, and I, you know, in it I wrote a tribute to um, Queen, Queen Elizabeth. By the, by the way, my name is also Elizabeth. It's Florence Elizabeth because my parents, my father said, I asked him why the name, give me the names. He said Florence, so that I will help the whole world. And according to him, sing like a nightingale. And he said, Elizabeth, so you'll be queenly in everything you did. My father wasn't wrong because, you know, you live, when people tell you those things, you try to live up to them. So I have my little card there, as you can see, in my handwriting, King Charles III. Now, these are Jews from Israel. They took several pictures of me, and then they wanted to, wanted to know what are Seventh-day Adventists. And I said, we worship like you. We worship on Sabbath, on, on Saturday, just like you. And people asked me about the Pathfinder Club. I told them, I told them what's the Pathfinder Club and so forth. So yes, next slide, please. Yeah. <laughs> I know this would make you laugh. And you notice how I'm laughing there because my friend told the police to arrest me. <laughs> now, I had a half a sack on my back because, uh, as I said, people don't realize that I'm disabled, but I am. So I had a half a sack and I couldn't get, you know, it was falling down. So the police, they came, they took it from me, they tightened it. Oh, they really treated me like, like royalty. And then they wanted a picture with me. So there we are picture with them. Yes, next slide. Now this was the best, for me, this was the highlight of being there. You see those two ladies there? They were having their breakfast. And they stopped their breakfast when they saw me coming to ask, oh, are you in guides? And I said, no. And we, I spent the longest time with them because they told me what happens in guides. You see the lady putting up with our tree. She said, that's a guide sign. She wanted me to salute because she said, I said, that's what we do. And then they told the two of them, they hadn't seen each other for more than 30 years. And, because, and they said, because of the queen's death, look how they're meeting up. And then we are meeting you. And they started to tell me some things about themselves. They took my pictures. We exchanged, um, we have also exchanged details. And I said to them, would you like me to pray for you? because from the things they were telling me. And they said, oh, thank you so much. I stood there and I prayed for them. Even if it's just for those two ladies, that's why the Lord sent me. It's not so much about viewing the body. Yes, I did. As I told you, it only took 30 minutes. And another thing, because I was in my Pathfinder uniform, I had to go up and down and salute twice. So I, you know, it's just as somebody said that I'm a trailblazer because we should have taken, oh, they did ask me, is there anybody else from your group? And I said, no. So if all the pathfinders were there, you know, it would have been a good thing because for some reason, I don't know, I'm not saying anything because I, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, part of the, I'm part of this great movement. But I want to say, you know, 
I want to say to us, I want to close, I'm going to close with this. Galatians 5, verses 16 to 21. I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. Oh, by the way, um, um, is there a picture there with the new Jerusalem? Yes, that's what I want. Thank you. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the, by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I tell you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I am saying this to you. Now, everything, you know, it was nice, all the things I did, but to me, the most important thing for me is being in the kingdom of God. And if, you know, as I, one of the pictures, I show you some of the pomp and circumstance, but one of, the, one of these days, we, once we have done what God requires of us, we all of us, and I would like to make certain all of us, including our little ones, are in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said in Revelation 22, verses 12 to 14, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. I want to be in that city. This morning, I want to give you, oh, it's afternoon, sorry. This afternoon, I want to give you the chance to reconsecrate and rededicate your life so that we can all be in the kingdom of God. I like us, as we sing, we're going to sing 307. And as we sing 307, we do not know how long we are going to be on this sword. I can leave here tomorrow and then, um, today, and then tomorrow you hear the time then. Some of us think we have more life, you know, that we don't have to do anything today. But I want to say to us that we do not know. We do not know. And therefore, every time I preach a sermon, I call people back to the kingdom of heaven. I call them to reconsecrate and rededicate their lives to God. And I want us at this time to be singing 307, I'm coming to the cross. Could you stand as we sing it, please? I thought the words would have been on the screen because I did ask for them to be on the screen, but maybe maybe not. All right, I'll call them out for you because there's a, a team here, so you can sing while I call out the words. I'm coming to the cross. I am coming to the cross. I am coming to the cross. I am poor and weak and blind. I'm counting all but trust. salvation pride. I am trusting Lord in thee. Oh thou Lamb of Calvary. Humbly at thy cross I bow. Save me Jesus. Save me. Okay I want us to stop for a minute. Could we, I hope the words could be on the screen so that our children can see the words, especially our song leaders, because, you know, they want to sing. But while we are waiting for that to happen, I just want to say to us, you know, the second verse says, Long my heart has sight for thee, long as evil reigned within. Jesus sweetly speaks to me, I will cleanse you from all sin. And, you know, as we sing those words, let, let them be meaningful to us as we sing them. Long my heart has sighed for thee, long as he for reign within. 
All right, let's sing. I'll, I'll continue to call the words for you. Long my heart has sighed for thee. No. My heart has sighed for thee. Long has evil reigned within. And this is where we're going to stop. It's very, it's very important. Here I give my own to thee. I'm just saying the words before we sing them. And this is when I would like, when we're singing them, sing them as you mean them. Here I give my own to thee, friends and time and earthly store, soul and body, thine to be, holy thine forevermore. So let's sing. Here I give. to be saved in your kingdom father we have listened to your words today instructing us to turn not to the right nor to the left but follow the path where you're leading us we want to be saved in your kingdom dear lord we want to get to heaven dear lord father i bring all of us before you today and dear lord take our whatever is going on in our lives lord some of us may be thinking evil right now, even though we are in church. Take it away from us, Lord. Take away any evil thoughts from us and help us to be pure because we want to be saved in the kingdom of heaven. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers because you are such a great God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.